Hi guys, I am going to give you a tutorial on the front doormat. I sell a ton of these and I get a lot of questions about how to do it. So I thought I would show you my process. And I have my stencil that I made. Uh, I think that you pretty much utilize the 12 by 24 mat entirely and it fits perfectly. I think it, it takes up the right amount of space on this 18 by 30 inch mat that I bought. I use 651. I find that it works really well. I've tried freezer paper. It doesn't work. I can't get it to cut on my mat very well. I've tried stencil. I've tried 631. The best I found was the 651. So that's what I've used. You can use whatever color you want. I find lighter works a little better because then you can see what you're doing. Um, if you use a black uh, vinyl, it's hard to see sort of what you've gone over with your letters. Okay, so I tend to reuse my transfer tape. As you can see, there's there's matte pieces kind of stuck in it. Um, I just find that when you reuse it, you can, uh, it comes off a lot easier. The vinyl will come off a lot easier to get onto the mat. Otherwise, if it's a brand new piece, it's hard to, uh, to unstick it. Um, obviously my ruler, I have masking tape. I'll show you what I use that for. Um, I use Craftsmart outdoor paint. I have a, a brush, tweezers. I think that's all I use. I'll go through it. Uh, so first thing is I'm going to take my vinyl off of the backing. Okay, so that's off. Um, and it's actually, I love working with these mats because they're very forgiving. Um, when you paint it, it's not as detailed and precise. You don't have to be as detailed and precise as other things that I've been, I've been used to doing. Um, and also like when you put your vinyl down, you can move it around no problem. It's, it's not gonna stick the first time. 651 um, is a permanent vinyl, but on this it's not permanent at all. Uh, okay, so I'm gonna just kind of measure it with my ruler. I just wanna make sure that it's lined up properly. Um, I like to use this where it's straight across and that's just a little bit easier to measure it. And I, I, I go from the very, the very furthest part on each side and then like that, just to see. Like, just to make sure it's measured properly. So, six inches. That's good. You can kind of eyeball it as well, but I like to measure it because I like it to be perfect. Four. And I also like it being a little bit higher on the top than on the bottom. Okay, that's pretty good. And I'm going to flatten it out. You can even still pull it up if you need to after it's flattened. One more quick measure before I pull it off. Okay, it looks good to me. So, so what I'm going to do now is I have my masking tape and I pretty long, pretty good size, and I'm just going to put it right across here. I'm just kind of stick it so that the, the that part's lined up. That's right. So it's like on here. I just help I think that it helps hold the vinyl down and it makes it pull off a lot easier. And then you can slowly pull away your backing or your transfer tape. Okay, that's off, and I'm just gonna go and I'm gonna touch it up a titch. Just flatten it out. Make sure that it's, it's 
good. It's on there. Adjust any pieces that need adjusting. Measure it just to make sure it didn't shift too much. Looks good. Yeah, that's pretty good. Um, so now I'm going to take some masking tape, just the leftovers from this, and anywhere that it's kind of close to the edge. I'm going to put some tape because I'm a little sloppy when it comes to painting and I don't want to get any of the black paint anywhere but the stencil. And this will help me sort of keep it contained. This is probably far enough, but I'll get that. And I'll also, yeah, just kind of give it a bit of extra. Now, it's looking good. So the next thing I like to do is to blow dry it to get some heat on it. So the heat's gonna like press it right in to the, the mat. And then that way, when you're painting this stencil, it's not gonna, the paint's not gonna bleed underneath. So on the hottest setting, you're just gonna blow dry the heat and just go, don't go too much wind don't don't put too much power because it'll blow the letters right up so just kind of go half speed it's kind of like that hot kind of go slowly back and forth you can see it's sort of starting to melt into the mat that's what you want anytime the letter kind of blows up the letter blows up just kind of take your tweezers and flatten it right Let's try again So that's kind of on there. I think it looks pretty good. You can sort of see where it's pressed down well enough. Um, and I also just take my hair dryer like this and make sure nothing comes up at the end. And if anything comes up, you know, just kind of have to go around and piece it down again or warm it up and flatten it down. I use my hand to flatten it. It does get a little bit warm. Um, you could always use, I've used tennis balls before, but I find that I make a big mess when I do that. I like my hand, but you know, use whatever you want. Um, I also noticed that I need to put some tape over the L as well. Just cause I want to be nice and neat. Okay, so now we've got our design. Um, it looks good, we're ready to start painting. So, as I said, I use an outdoor paint. I've had mine outside for uh, a good six months and it's just starting to fade right now. So um, I think it held up really, really well. And um, I'm happy with it, but I kind of wanted a new mat anyway. Uh, I end up with these bottles using about maybe one and a half for each one. So I like to put a little um, pile of paint on the side, just like this. And I take my brush, which is like flat head, it works really well. And I kind of dip it in and then just kind of start going over the whole thing. I like to go over it sort of first. And then uh, I'll color it in after. And just put a good amount of paint on there. Like it's gonna take a lot. This mat really soaks up paint. I find that uh, you'd be surprised at how much paint it'll actually take and it'll just, it'll just keep soaking it up, but it's good because if you're, if the paint's getting soaked up, that means that it's getting a really, it's really getting into the mat, if you know what I mean. 
Um, I like to go like right above it and uh, just kind of give it a good dab. And as I said, it's, the super, it's super forgiving, so you don't have to be that gentle when you're going over it. Just make sure you're not moving the vinyl too much, which you shouldn't be because you've got a really good stick on it from when you've blow dried, when you use the blow dryer. I think that a lot of people use pins. I've seen people use pins before, and to, I've tried that and it does not work for me. I find that it just like just shifts everywhere. This is the best method I've found. So I'm just going over it really lightly, and then I'm gonna go over it again. Okay, so the first coat is kind of done. Just a really light coat. Um, oh, and just to let you know, I do like doing my mats on the kitchen counter. I've made some space because it saved my back. I find that doing it on the kitchen table or on an art space is really hard because you have to kind of stand over it to see um, if there are if there are any um, like spots that you've missed and. It's really a lot easier if you're standing up over it, but it hurts your back unless you're up somewhere high. Now I'm just going over and using a lot more paint and just kind of going over it again. You're going to see exactly what I mean when I'm saying you need to cover all the, the spots that are in it. And you want to be up so when there's lots of light as well, because in the basement, which is where my where I usually do all my stuff, I, I couldn't do it down there because I really couldn't find, I would, I would bring it upstairs and I would see a lot of imperfections. So I really like doing it up in the kitchen where I can see a lot better. As you can see, it's taking a ton of paint, but that's okay, it's what you want. I just love how these turn out. They're so pretty when they're done. Uh, they're super, pretty simple. They take a little bit of time, maybe like 45 minutes to an hour-ish. That's including drying time, I think, though, to get it all done. But they turn out really nice. So now you can see that I've gone over it. It's really dark. It's looking really nice, but I'm obviously it's not done because as I said, the mat just soaks up so much of this paint that I'm going to start at the very beginning of where I started doing the dark paint and I'm just going to go over and look and see if I see any uh, areas that look a little bit lighter that need some more paint on them. So, so I'm just going to do this is like, just gonna go over it and again and you're gonna see like if you look really closely you're gonna see some areas that are a little bit like the paint sort of started to sink in and so it's a little bit lighter it does take a lot of paint as I said maybe even a couple of these bottles but you can see where it's already started to sink in I'm just gonna kind of go over it it's not gonna take as much paint this round because it's, it's already has a ton of paint on it. I don't seal these with anything either. A lot of people put different stuff to seal it. I find that I don't really need it. As long as you put enough paint on it, you kind of don't really need to seal it. So I've gone over it like three times. So initially I just kind of put a light coat on it and then I put it much darker. And then after that, I just did a light touch up of where I saw it needed it. So I am now gonna let it dry, probably maybe an hour. And then when I come back, a lot of the paint will have sunk into the mat a bit more. And I'm gonna go over it one more time 
with the paint. Okay, I will come right back. Okay, so I'm back. I have let it dry for about an hour and a half. Um, it actually looked really good. I got a pretty good coat on the first time, but I am gonna go over it again and just any spots that I think are a little bit less than perfect, maybe needs a little bit more paint in there, I'm gonna just do that right now. It actually won't take me very long, so no. Okay, as I said, this is really forgiving, <laughs> but um, that kind of sucks when you do something like that. This is for me anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Um, <laughs> I'm gonna try to make it look better later. I just try to not do what I just did, and that is to throw your paint bottle. <laughs> okay, so a little mishap. Um, but I'm going to try to cut it out later. I probably will get a little bit out, but that's okay. As I said, it's just for me. Um, this is why I put the tape here and it didn't seem to matter this time, but that's okay. Okay. So what I'm doing is I, I'm just going over all the pieces that I think might need just a little bit more paint a touch. Not, not much. It actually did a really, really good job covering it. Um, really sunk in very well, but there are a few little places that I can see that have some some of the mat poking through, and I'm just gonna make sure that I get all the pieces nice. I still will take tons of paint if you let it, it'll just keep soaking up the paint. Um, I find the more paint that I use, the better, uh, the better coverage, and, and I think the longer lasting it will actually be in general. It'll hold up better when it has more paint on it, in my experience. But I think it actually looks really, really good. There's not much more I need to do here. Okay, so I'm actually going to peel this off, I think. Um, usually I would wait till it's dry but it actually, it's pretty dry because I didn't put much on on this coat. And it looks really good. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna peel this off and just let's see how it looks. It's really, really easy to peel off actually, as you can see. Just be careful if you're pulling it off a little bit wet. You just wanna make sure the paint doesn't run anywhere. Ah, it looks so good. So you can just, Peel off the pieces. It's still a little bit wet, but that's okay. I'm gonna be careful. You can let it dry entirely and pull it up. It's totally fine. Whatever you want to do. I just really wanted to get this done before the kids got home from school and get it out of the way. All right. Um, you can also take a pair of scissors if you want and just kind of clean up all the little hairs that are around. scissors. I'm going to clip all the hairs. It doesn't really matter. And I did make a mistake, but I'm going to try to clip that out. I don't know if it's actually going to do anything, but that's fine. As I said, it's for me. If it was for a paying customer, I probably wouldn't be able to sell it like this because of the mistake. But I think it looks really good. I think it turned out really nice. I'm going to turn it around so you guys can see it a little better. Okay. Um, so here is the front door map that I made. I'm actually going to link to my blog in the comments and you'll be able to get the uh, SVG, SVG file that I used for this uh, for free there. So if you guys want just to click over my blog, you can see that. Um, and if you have any questions, you can leave comments below. Also check out the other videos. My daughter really likes to do some crafting as well and has some videos that are really cute and she would probably love if you looked at them. Okay, thanks for watching. Here's how we fixed the mat. Take a pair of sharp scissors, clip away at it, and then just fold the mat where the mistake is and clip a little bit more deeper into it and then wipe away the excess. The, you can't really see the little hole that you've made in it, but it, 
it'll look pretty good at the end.